Bloom and Grow YouTube show. Basic terrarium need to know. Give us a scoop. Okay, well, the scoop is <laughs> um, for materials, I'll tell you what I use the most. Uh, I use tongs. So these are aquarium tongs. They're long. They're about 12 inches long. Mm -hmm. And that allows you to get into small spaces without putting like your fat hand in there mm -hmm. <laughs> and messing everything up. So that's like the number one tool that I use all the time. Okay. Um, secondly, a spray bottle. I mm -hmm. like the spray bottles that have the little nozzle that you can change so that it's either a stream or a fine mist spray because I use it for different things. Um, and I fill that with distilled water and distilled water or reverse osmosis water. That's not only good for your plants, but it keeps um, those hard water stains from forming inside the glass, which mm -hmm. you don't want because then you can't see inside. Um, and then I use scissors. Um, and I, I think those are basically the tools and then like supplies you would need would be obviously the container, the glass container. Um, then you want to create a drainage layer. So for that, I either use pebbles or horticultural charcoal. And the nice thing about the charcoal, if you use that as a drainage layer, keeps things kind of fresh inside and smelling a little bit better. Um, and then the next thing you'll need is a peat or cocoa core based soil with some something for aeration added. So I usually use perlite um, or something similar. Um, and that's about it. That's the supplies that you need for a terrarium. Mm -hmm. um, with terrariums, let's talk a little bit about the wild world of glass containers that you could okay. have because you could have an open terrarium or a closed terrarium. So what do we need to know for both of those? Okay. So that all comes down to what plants you're going to choose. Okay. Um, that will like tell you what type of jar you're going to want to get. So I always tell people when you're planning a terrarium, make a list of the plants that you want to use. And then Google or whatever, you know, consult a book that, you know, or whatever it is to find out what are the needs, the growing needs or conditions that that plant needs. Um, for example, water, um, light, size, what is their habitat? If you can find on that list several that go together, mm -hmm. then let's say all of these plants are plants that need high humidity, then you want to choose a jar um, that has a lid because that'll keep all of the humidity inside. If the plants that you've chosen don't, they, you know, they like to dry out a little bit, or even if you're doing succulents or something like that, well, then you would want to choose a jar that's open. Okay. And where do you like to source your containers? Any, and I found that like, estate sales, you can find the coolest contain glass containers sometimes for really cheap. Yeah. I totally agree with like garage sales or yeah. anything like that. If that's your thing. Um, secondhand stores often have really cool, like vintage ones that you yeah. can't get anymore. So like, I, I, as a vase, I mean, how many glass vases do you see at the thrift store every time you go, but that's perfect for an, for a terrarium. Yeah, exactly. So I like doing that when I have the time. Otherwise, if you want um, a place that usually has a really good selection is um, Home Goods or TJ Maxx, or they're all kind of the same company. Mm -hmm. um, or what is the other company? That Marshall's. They, Marshall's. Yeah, my husband's favorite store. He's, he loves Marshall's. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they often have really, really, a really cool selection and, and not expensive at all. So I like shopping there. And then okay. of, of course, craft stores and things mm -hmm. usually have glass. Okay. Got it. So those are some good places that you can look, but you yes. can start like I did literally taking a, a ball jar, a jar from my kitchen yeah. and I screwed the, you know, silver top, you know, on top of it. And it was so rudimentary. I didn't have tongs, but I used normal tweezers and I took a fork and I stuck a cork on top of it. And that was my damper to, to, put, to it's press perfect. the soil down. Yeah. I mean, and, and use what you have. I mean, if all you have is the spoons and forks mm -hmm. that you eat with, I mean, use those tools. They'll work, you know, why yeah. not? So. Yeah. 
I love it. So, okay. So you've walked us through that. Now let's talk plants because you were saying high humidity yeah. versus low humidity. Are there any plants that you don't recommend putting in a terrarium, any type of terrarium? Um, the only one that I, you know, types of plants, obviously, if the size, if they get huge, you can put them in a terrarium when they're small, but you have to consider that you're either going to have to be constantly sizing up mm -hmm. or just don't use those. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then generally, like, I, I don't recommend cactus and succulents at all for the closed terrariums. And if you have them in one without a lid, it should really be more like almost like a bowl mm -hmm. instead of covered. They, they don't need the humidity. So, you know, traditionally, those types of plants wouldn't have been used in a terrarium. We do it now in this modern day, but you have to consider that it's going to be more like a dish garden. Um, rather than a terrarium. Do, do, a true terrarium. Do, 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 do